people understand sciatica as a disease but i would like to uh, tell my audience that sciatica is a symptom just like fever fever could be uh, due to any reasons like it could be because of uh, chest infection urine infection bacterial infection tubercular infection so fever is a symptom and the background disease may vary but similarly sciatica is a symptom it's not a disease so any pain which emerges uh, from our lower back and going to thigh or leg region is called sciatica so it's a symptom and it could be uh, due to various reasons this uh, sciatica pain can occur in a person the most common reason being the prolapse of intervertebral disc what we call disc prolapse lower uh, lumbar disc prolapse in a patient so that's a commonest uh, other term for this is disc herniation disc protrusion herniation of intervertebral disc or herniation of nucleus pulposus in common term we we call it a disc prolapse okay that's uh, that's being the commonest reason for uh, sciatica pain in a person so other reason could be like spondylolisthesis where there is a breakage of a uh, l4 or l5 spine or it could be a compression fracture or it could be a tumor it could be spondylodiscitis in india the most common being the tuberculosis so there could be a infective reason also for the sciatica and and there are some uh, rare reasons like uh we see in some congenital abnormalities where there is a uh, abnormality in the spine structures and one more common reason being the what we call lumbar canal stenosis or age related degenerative disc disease okay so any 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 cause which which causes compression of the nerve roots or the sciatic nerve can give rise to this sciatica pain one more like very under diagnosed condition is a piriformis syndrome in which the cause is a is a piriformis muscles which is in the root of sciatic nerve that compresses the nerve that also mimics the like um, disherniation other thing and it it could be a one of cause of sciatica pain the back background cause is a compression of nerve or nerve roots so nerve having three components one is motor one is sensory and other is the autonomic one let's come to one by one to understand what could accompany with the sciatica pain so first thing the motor compression if there is a motor compression then there could be a weakness of lower limb it could be complete or it could be the partial like one of common manifestation we see in our clinic is a foot drop or toe drop where patient is able to dorsiflex the foot or able to extend the great toe so that's a, a motor weakness other could be partial or complete loss of sensations in foot or lower leg or any other part so that's a sensory that's a second component third is the uh, autonomic which which is seen in very very uh, uh, very rarely when the patient loses the bladder bowel control few population is like uh, more affected than the other and uh, this group we can call lifestyle dysfunctions like the way uh, they they maintain their postures and uh, lack of sedentary lifestyles so these are the uh, like modern day problem where the person is not able to maintain its uh, posture the straight posture which is supposed to be ergonomically correct so like workplace or like uh, the people in certain profession like heavy weight lifters gym instructors the person is involved in hard work where uh, there is a sudden bending and lifting of the weight those are the population which are at risk of developing this kind of sciatica second is like certainly those post traumatic patients third one being the old age where there is a de- degenerative disc disease like arthritis kind of thing these are the population which are at risk of developing uh, this sciatica pain
first thing is patient's perception about the pain and that being the lower back pain which is radiating to the gluteal region which is radiating to the thigh and sometimes it goes down to the to the leg and the foot or toes so that's a, a first thing about the awareness of this kind of pain second uh, if patient is lying down and with the knee straight if patient lifts the leg up so there may be some restriction at some point say uh, normally patient can lift the leg up to 90 degrees okay so if patient is able to uh, not able to do this leg raising active leg raising beyond say 30 degree 40 degree 60 degree so this is called slr tests straight leg raise test so this is one of thing which patients also tells that i am not able to extend my uh, my my legs above so that that is one of thing which can like help in diagnosing uh, the condition and mostly it's a clinical signs which we elicit that's a almost diagnostic of uh, the sciatica pain the definitive treatment is based on the etiological factor what is called causing the sciatica it's maybe the lifestyle issue where we are not able to maintain our postures and uh, the ergonomics which is required for the proper spine so if we change our lifestyle we start doing exercise and uh, maintaining a good posture so the non uh, organic one can be uh, like preventable and may be treated so that's the first part but second certainly first mainstay of treatment is conservative one that we need to understand it's not that, that the surgery or any other intervention being the first one so first line of treatment is conservative that is a rest with some muscle relaxants anti inflammatory some medications given for the nerve, nerve radiculopathies and hot fermentation and the local gel applications these are the first line of treatment so if there is no red flag signs so this conservative management should be done and it should be like at least 2 to 3 weeks should be given and most of patients like 80 to 90% patients get pain relief dramatically with 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 rest and these measures if there is a fracture and there is a compression of nerves certainly it would require definitive treatment that is surgery where we need to decompress the nerve but if it's because of the commonest reason and like this prolapse then 80 to 90 percent patients get a relief with the with the time if it is persistent beyond four weeks or it is accompanied with the with the neurological deficit that means the loss of sensations loss of motor power and then early operative intervention is required so in those case it must be uh, like uh, uh, it should be operated uh, within within a, a limit with a with a time span it should not be prolonged if we have excluded the serious like any serious etiology behind the sciatica so we can wait for a while and uh, it's not that it will persist for life the natural course of non serious etiological sciatica is that patient feel pain on different intervals like maybe 10 days pain then there is a prolonged interval and then then once the etiological factor comes back the postures or stress or anything the pain is recurring so in those conditions uh, there is a chronicity of this pain patient uh, suffers uh, not continuously but uh, in 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 certain intervals so that's a natural uh, course of this sciatica pain there are uh, like certainly dependent on the etiology if there is a prolonged nerve compression because of any etiology either being a injury fracture infection if there is a prolonged compression then it can damage the nerves permanently and then recovery becomes uh, very difficult so sensory deficits like loss of sensation in some part of legs 
motor weakness could be permanent if not um, this pressure is relieved on time and the one most dangerous thing which which is very very uh, important to understand is the bladder and bowel involvement so if there is in incidence of this coda equina one one entity uh, likes seen in maybe one in 1000 uh, of the sciatica patients this bladder bowel involvement so this this is very um, disturbing complications which is seen in sciatica patients if compression is like severe so there are some we need to understand what are the indications for surgery because as i mentioned first step is uh, conservative management that is a non operative one where we give medications we in fact prescribe some physiotherapy where we prescribe tens ift and other things also uh, second is a minimally invasive thing like injections epidural blocks and other things but if there is like severe uh, like nerve deficits sensory motor deficits cord equina involvement and in fact if this compression because of infection or fractures then it is a indication for operative intervention where we do decompression with or without stabilizations sciatica pain is uh, like having a spectrum like uh, some having a very a pain uh, severity of say 2 by 10 3 by 10 to a very very disabling pain that is 9 by 10 8 by 10 so one thing is it reduces the uh, like our working hours so one of usual absence from like workplace work hour loss of work hour so it affects in that one one way second there is a mental in- involvement there is a stress which which is associated with with this kind of lower back pain and sciatica so there is a constant bothering or maybe discomfort uh, which which makes a person not to like giving its best at its workplace or maybe sporting activity or other thing person is not able to perform fully like uh, for example sportsman so their efficacy their sporting activities is reduced because of this sciatica similarly a person working on the desk so the the work hour the useful work hour is reduced and certainly it it, it gives agony and uh, stress mental stress so there's other things which affects our lifestyle first thing is the we need to know about the what is a good posture or what is the ergonomics okay this is this this should be well understood by because almost one third of world population suffers from this kind of pain minor or severe in some part of their life so it's so common and the etiology being animal is uh, like human is evolved from the animal animal were like four four footed and we 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 evolved against the gravity so there is a inherited problem with our lower back if we don't maintain the posture office going a uh, person working in and like desks and other things uh, uh, there is a tendency that we we adjust ourselves to the to the environment the the working environment but it should be the reverse one the the surrounding uh, area should adjust to our postures and our habitus so that's the one thing we should utilize our workplace very well similarly while work we need to take care of uh, of the things like sudden bending should be avoided over uh, uh, like a weight uh, everybody has different capacity weight lifting and other things should be taken care so yes and other thing like gadgets using gadgets we need to maintain the posture while uh, watching television our posture should be correct while reading the student the, the posture should be correct so there are simple measures which can be taken to prevent this kind of sciatica pain